start sir ah start ma okay sir Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Good afternoon to everyone gathered for this. On this third day of program, I whole utterly welcome you all. I call upon Mrs. M. S. Mohanapriya, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, to deliver the welcome address. Thank you. A great. Greeting for the audience, such as a good afternoon to everyone present here. The beautiful thing about learning is that nobody can take it away from you. With the blessing of our beloved founder, late line Dr. K. S. Rangasamy in JF. A very warm welcome to our chairman, Mr. R. Srinivasan in absence here. I would like to welcome our young energetic vice chairman, Mr. Sachin Srinivasan in absence here. A cordial and health, heartfelt welcome to the respected principal, Dr. M. Karthikeyan, KSR College of Arts and Science for Women, Trichangu, who has been the backbone of this event in absence here. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to our event today. We have the privilege of hosting Dr. B. Radhakrishnan, a renowned leader in the differential equation. Dr. B. Radhakrishnan has achieved great success in the field and has significantly contributed to the community and society. The achievement and dedication to the work serve as an inspiration to us all. It's my glad to welcome to all the participants for the third day FDP on differential calculus and matrix theory in science, engineering, and technology. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Next, I call upon Mrs. Monisha, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, to deliver the address of our chief guest, Dr. B. Balakrishnan. Thank you. That Dr. Radha Krishnan is an Assistant Professor in the Department of Mathematics at PSG College of Technology, Coimbatore, from 2012. His research experience started in the Department of Mathematics, Bharatiya University, Coimbatore, from August 2007 to till date. He has completed his PhD at Bharatiya University, Coimbatore, entitled Studies on Controllability of Nonlinear Neutral Impulsive Integral Differential Evolution System in Banachi Spaces. His current area of research is Control Theory and Differential Equation. He has awarded RFSMS by UGC during Feb 2010 to December 2011 at Bardia University, Coimbatore. And Best Paper Award for presentation of the paper in the International Conference ICC DMMS 2014 held at Calcutta Mathematical Society, Kolkata, December 19 to 21 and 2014. And also awarded Sri P. K. Das Memorial Best Faculty Award in Mathematics under Junior Category, Nehru Group of Institutions, Coimbatore, during 2017 to 2018. He was life member on Calcutta Mathematical Society and Indian Society for Technical Education and Indian Mathematical Society. He has delivered special lecture hands on training on various topics like effective research documentation using LaTeX and a workshop on MATLAB for engineering applications. He has published a book on existence results for semi-linear integral differential inclusions with ISBN numbers. He has presented various articles and national and international conferences. He was acting as a reviewer of Journal of Dynamical and Control Systems, Advanced Differential Equations and Thai Journal of Mathematics, National and International Journals. We are glad to invite you, sir. The session is yours. Thank you. Thank you for nice introduction. May I audible? All of you? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes. 
I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me, Dr. Devarajan, who is my close friend of mine. And uh, I take this opportunity to explore my views and ideas in this occasion. Actually, this span of time, I'm unable to expose everything. In this time, I just present my ideas. Now I try to share my slides. So in this time, I just divide my talk into two categories. One is uh, linear algebra and uh, another one is uh, calculus, particularly differential calculus. In this linear algebra, there is this screen is visible now. My screen is visible to you, everybody? Yes, sir, visible. Yes, fine. So in this linear algebra, I just concentrate particularly shows from matrix theory. Uh, algebra and calculus without the entire mathematics, algebra and calculus are more closer. So in simply to say, we know very well while solving a <clears throat> second order differential equation, like for example. We know very well in this either. So this is taken from a calculus and we have, so far we never have any technique to solve in such kind of equations. So what we do is just use some uh, subsidiary equations like lambda square 2 lambda plus 2 equal to 0. And uh, this is called an algebra. So algebra and calculus are close friend of us. This is in calculus and this is an algebra. So we have to switch over from calculus to algebra, and this kind of concept is called operational calculus. So that's why I can choose the topic of algebra in linear algebra, particularly the matrix theory, and along with the calculus differential at spot. So now I move on. So in the overview of the matrix theory, to show some basics of matrix theory and applications in linear and nonlinear systems. Finally, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. In linear algebra used in various topics in a computer, computer games, search engines, robotics, problem solving, and uh, image compression and making music. I mentioned only few, many of the natures are available. And the matrix theory, where we have to use the matrix theory, matrix theory has only two advantages, mainly two advantages. The main thing is reduces complicated systems of equations into simple expressions. Either a system becomes any system, any such kind of system, either it's a differential system or uh, any other systems. So those complicated systems may convert it into simple expressions. For that purpose, we are using the matrix theory. And uh, the adaptable of systematic method of mathematical treatment and well suited to a computer. Please, you mute any one of the participants or disturbing. And uh, we know very well these are very types of so many types of matrices for that purpose. I just mentioned only a few. And uh, these things are not, not required. Mainly, I concentrated where we apply such kind of uh, matrix systems in the engineering field and in other fields. And these are some of the special types of matrices. And next, the system of linear equations. So the system is called, we have more than one equations. So system of linear equations, I can mention in M, I'm just to, this is generalized form of M equations with the N unknowns. And the system of equation, linear system of linear equations to produce an equation number one. And if it is called linear, the linearity came only in the case of variables have a unique degree as well as there is no product between each variables. This is common to linear cases. But in general in situations, the linear equations are occur rarely because mainly many engineering systems are located in the nonlinear systems. And the above said linear equations, these are very fundamentals. Just to go through with the first one or two, three slides. And the above linear system, I think this equation 1.1 may return in the form of Ax is equal to B, we know very well. Where A is the coefficients, this is called a matrix, and X is an unknown variable, and right hand side is the non homogeneous terms. Here, the nature of A, what is this nature of A? 
this a either it is a square form and a non square form everybody we know very well if a is a square matrix we know very well the objective of this system here the matrix a has an invertible then we have able to find our x vector we have to calculate the unknowns for it in case of a is non invertible then we go for further process so in this occasion i try to show you what happen in the non square matrix invertibles so at this moment i just show you these things we know very well the matrix is square then we know the inverse that is the procedure is there we know uh, either uh, this is the formula for uh, general case for a square matrix and for uh, this is a particular example for some 2 by 2 matrix is given and now my concept i try to provide for a non square matrix what about the non square matrix in case the system a is non square matrix how to find the inverse of it so such kind of non square matrices are uh, the inverse of non square matrices is calculated through pseudo inverse the name is called as pseudo inverse in that pseudo inverse there are two kind of pseudo inverses occur one is right pseudo inverse another one is called a left pseudo inverse so here first in the first case i just show how to calculate the right pseudo inverses these things are applicable for large number of systems this is possible so given uh, this is a general case m by n matrix and the task is to calculate the matrix p can multiply with your original matrix a i think the non square matrix a then we can pro it produces to be a identity matrix that's the objective so in the first case i took m less than n that means the number of rows or i think number of equations are less than the number of unknowns and in this case your determinant i think your a a a dash i think a transpose is might be not not equal to zero the right zero inverse of the given size of matrices is defined in the form of a or plus so in this way you can define then you can immediately you can get that a or plus can multiply with your original matrix a it surely provides you an identity matrix this is one of the technique for finding an inverse of non square matrix and note that this ar plus is unique similarly you can show in the second case in case the number of equations are more than the number of unknowns for this nature so we have to calculate here you can multiply the determinant of a into a transpose here just in switch over from a transpose a determinant is non zero and then that define how to define the left zero inverse of n by a matrix is taken it as form of al plus here the expression is given in the form so after computing this the right hand side of al plus then you can make the product with al plus with a then surely you can get it as identity matrix identity matrix so note that this one also i think the left zero inverse is also a unique thing and now so in the engineering point of view suppose you are uh, any system can model by uh, uh, algebraical equation i think uh, matrix equation theory once we can done in the matrix rank this is an one of the technique uh, along with your matrix inverse is known that means i just show you this is the system of equations so any system of equation i consider in this form in that your a as an invertible then it is obvious to calculate the your defined solution so here i, I need to show you so in engineering nature your matrix is done along with the matrix inverse is just done then it produces the computation efficient solution for the set of simultaneous equations numerous applications in many fields of engineering so these two are most efficient for calculating the solutions of the system of linear equations and some of the few uh, applications are uh, involved in uh, engineering nature uh, first example i produced in electrical networks In electrical networks, there are two kind of problems they can calculate while using the matrix theory. One is called mesh analysis. Another one is called nodal analysis. What is the problem of finding in the mesh analysis in a sense? So suppose we have any circuit. We in a school level or in college level, we studied it. It is only one circuit. Actually, it's a combination of combination of electric circuit. In that, you can divide it. Each combination is the meshes. So the problem of mesh analysis, you have to determine the current flows in the What is the level of current flowing in the closed meshes? The another kind of problem is called a nodal analysis. What is the problem in the nodal analysis? In a sense, to determine the potential set each node, like in network flow models. So these are the main 
things uh, in the engineering field, I think particularly in the electrical networks, they are using the uh, matrix theory in the case of mesh analysis in the form, and it's called a node analysis form. In the first case, I just given a small little detail in the, no, in the electrical network nature. I think these are the fundamental preliminary objects. I think resistance, inductance, capacity, these are very well known. And uh, I have to apply the Kirchhoff's law. Uh, based on this, you have to sum of uh, EI should be zero and the sum of each node should be assumed to be zero. So the mesh analysis, for example, you can consider as the combination of two cases. And this is one mesh, another one is called, this is called an another mesh. So in this case, in the mesh one, they can calculate it according to the Kirchhoff's law. They can make an equation, the first one. And in the mesh two, in I2, they can calculate another equation. Now this is looking like a system of linear equations. After that, they can combine it into a matrix equation. This is of the form AX equal to B. In mathematics point of view, we shown this is nothing but AX equal to B. In the electric network, they can assume that this is an impedance matrix, I think. Mesh impedance matrix, and this is called a vector. Unknowns in mesh current. Vectors means a pain, and this is a right hand side nature. Then we can apply our uh, matrix theory. They can even produce a solution. The next case, nodal analysis. Similarly, similar circuit, they can consider as a nodal nature. So in the node one and node two, we can calculate the same system of two equations using the Kirchhoff's law. And this system of equation may consider as usual in the form of AX equal to B. Here, this is called the known conductance matrices. And this is the unknown vector here on E2 is a nodal potential and with the amount of the right hand side. Then we can so once this is nothing but the complication situation. I think this is a complicated situation. Once we may complicate the situation into a matrix equation, then we can produce the matrix form, then it is easy to solve. So this is the nature, how our mathematics point of view, especially like uh, matrix, I think linear algebra and the calculus, how it is made an important role in engineering natures. I, I mentioned only few, so many of the things are available. Yeah, and the next one is called uh, mechanical structures in this can calculated in the static equilibrium of equations. So here I mentioned uh, one of the largest dimension I took. And this is the final case I need to tell you in the one, one kind of uh, application. I think this is the case for linearity nature. So any conservation laws in many application areas, that kind of laws may lead to set of simultaneous linear equation. Just now we've seen now, either in the electrical circuit case for nodal analysis, that system may convert it into an simultaneous linear equations. That simultaneous linear equation may form into the matrix equation like AX equal to B. So that equations, I have to find a solution by use of linear algebra. And I go to the main topic of the nature. So this is the system equations. Once this system is developed, what is our next achievement? Next, our aim is to calculate the solution is called this X vector. So we know very well in linear algebra, particularly in uh, linear algebra, so what are the types of solutions for a linear systems? A linear system, it adopts the consistent, in a sense, it has at least one solution, at least one in a sense, it may exist only one, otherwise more than one solution. If the linear system is inconsistent, these things are very known. I think all the mathematicians, we know very well, fundamental, these answers. Inconsistent, it may have no solution. We are unable to produce a mini solution. In this case, we go for some other techniques, either the numerical technique or some other things. In the inconsistent nature, the analytical techniques are failure. Then we go for some other natures. So I just mentioned some few uh, particular examples with the two unknowns and the three unknowns. So the, suppose we have to take these two other equations. This equation produces a unique solution, the one solution, and this one has a many solution. I think single equation with many un single equation with two unknowns, we can have many solution. And these kind of systems produces some. No solution natures. And these are some of the geometric interpretations with two equations and two unknowns. These are all two unknowns natures. And this is the interpretation for three equations, three unknowns in the plane equation form. These are some geometrical nature. So this is for uh, one solution nature, and this is for an solution and no solution. Yeah, next I'm just showing some. Particular problems may evolve in the engineering niche. I think in general case, I just mentioned few, particularly how the linear systems may evolve in the real situations. 
in the first one which is showing in how the linear system evolved in the economics level so yeah, i just mentioned on a particular problem and uh, this is called an uh, economy problem here we are uh, they are took some uh, three components one is uh, electrical and coal and uh, steel nature and there is some relationship between among the three so a uh, mathematics point of view this is the situation this is the problem and this is the according to the values are provided so from these values we can make a, a distribution outcome table here they just show this uh, direction is shown electrical to electric they can take some amount point one and from electrical to coal and some coal to electric and some coal to and this one is called steel and from steel to nature so based on this direction we can make it distributed over here this is coal to coal in a sense there is no cycle made between coal to coal because from coal, electrical to coal is there then from electrical to steel the nature is available but there is no coal to coal then you can assume zero similarly we can make the another fields of values and next so once this table is created it is easy to obvious the equation one to three is obvious here we we have three components three components our aim is to calculate the prices of each electric and coal and, and steel so here three system of equations are made equation one two one three then we know very well if these the equations are converted into homogeneous system and then we this is of the form ax is equal to zero i think the right hand side is down zero so sorry it's zero it should be homogeneous so in e homogeneous system our engineers as well as scientists are always interested to calculate some non-trivial solution because ax equal to zero in case of a exists in this case you are unknown so having a trivial solution Trivial solutions is obvious, but always you are interested in non-trivial solution. And this vector, P vector, is called in price of coal price and the uh, price of electric and the steel, and these are calculated in this. So this is one kind of problem they are used in economics level. And next, and this is one uh, similar kind of problem I just mentioned in the illustration point of view. And next, network flow. So in the network flow. So this one kind of network flow is provided to show you for your uh, uh, identification here. How to find a nature? So this is a one kind of a complex situation. So our aim is to convert this situation to simple expression of equations. So the key idea of uh, making this network flow into an algebraic system. How means? Here there are four kind of junctions are there. We can choose A, B, C, D are the junctions. In this case, we have to assign how much the flow in at Please look at the junction A. Here, some of the flows are in and some of the flows are out. They can calculate it using this is the key idea. The total flow into the junction is equal to total flow outside the junction. So I have to here. There are four junctions are there. We have to make that table. The A, B, C, D are the junctions. In junction A, these amounts are flow in and these are the flow out. Similarly, B, C, and D may have frame. So based on this table, you can calculate it there equations and finally this is the system a x equal to b form then finally you can find out the solution in this form so the second problem it is existing in network flow so many things are there but this is only a few i just mentioned already and next three i think this is obvious this is available in our uh, every huge pg books balancing of chemical equations balancing chemical equations and uh, here there's a uh, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These things are taken as your well, unknown variables x1, x2, and x3. And the suffix natures 3, 8, and these are all for the coefficients of x1, x2, and x3. See, this is a chemical representation. This representation may convert it into a systematic equation. So I think C3, H8. So three eights are uh, coefficients. And the left hand side equations are considered x1, x2, which implications the right hand side equations just a minute. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. And <clears throat> this is the respective chemical equation. This chemical equation may convert it into uh, our uh, system of equations in that the suffix values are uh, taken as uh, coefficients. And here the unknowns are uh, uh, considered as on left side is x and x on right hand side is x and x1. And uh, the balancing equation, this implication assigned mathematically as equal to, and uh, this situation is in x1. And after this, 
this is considered as an equation in this point of view. Then this is a notation for a x equal to zero. I think a homogeneous system, and we are making further. And at this point, just show you almost like yes. So in the, these are all some types of matrices already shown. Here I just show some of the examples. The main thing. So, so far I shown some of the examples in uh, engineering systems for linear cases only. But in general life situations, in engineering point of applications, the matrix techniques provides some concise and computation convenient means of handling problems involving large numbers of variables, inputs and outputs. But the linearity in cases is rare in the real. This is known to everybody. So in the engineering system, everywhere I mentioned only few. Those the uh, previous shown previous examples are commander linearity only. But in the, everywhere present in the model real world situations, linearity is very rare. So more and more powerful analysis and design techniques are available for linear than the nonlinear systems. So in the, in the civil engineering or mechanical engineering nature, it quite likely to a nonlinear sexual behavior is found. It may will be indicated through a results. In majority, I think the matrix theory we know very well. The eigenvalue algebraic problems are most important, and these the concepts are usually used by the sexual and civil engineering people. So in the, their task is to uh, find out how to the handling the nonlinear kind of uh, structures because the nonlinear kind of problems they can produce some uh, unpredictable results. So this is the task of an engineer. So it may be better to look and eliminate and the cause of nonlinearity, such as the blood pressure and friction, because in uh, while constructing a bridge in ages, your uh, bridges are uh, hitting them. Many of them they have feel while working on the bridge. You have you have feel like a bridge has some uh, sharing nature is there. Suppose the bridge has a tight construction as a definitely breaks. I think such kind of situations happen in our policy. And once upon a time, that is based on uh, wrong construction. I think the nonlinearity, based on the nonlinearity, the engineers made by some poor decisions. So especially these people have studied it, especially this uh, linear algebra nature. Fortunately, with the possible exemption of damping, significant nonlinearity in vibrating structures. Definitely, either I, I I surely say you can walk on any bridge. You can you may feel about such kind of vibration nature does ever it. And as they encountered in the industries today, actually quite rare. Next, and this is in the aerospace engineering. In aerospace engineering, we can make and um, is in a big number of systems. I think you have to pro provide a multi-wing like this. So in aerospace engineering, these are the major elevator. I think uh, in the aerospace nature, in uh, some kind of flowing, you can make a linear system. But after landing, and it takes some time. The situation is converted into linearity nature, but uh, after that, we are unable to produce to proceed with that linearity cases. So, based on these cases, we are going to produce a multiple nature in the aerospace engineering. Uh, actually, the aerospace engineering problem is inherently nonlinear. See, some usual model they can use the linearity. I think after moving the airplane, it moving, and after landing, I think sorry, after uh, upcoming the so for the little situation, they can produce with the linearity, but it fully it is a nonlinear nature. This is a task of an engineer. So their aim is to convert that nonlinear cases into lean. I think this nonlinearity reduces by linearity only by the way using some algebraical nature. I think the system of linear equation, I think the small linear equation, it may convert it into an algebraic, I think, a matrix theory. And next is an electronical engineering. Here is also the simulating nature can it they shows a linear model is also available and the nonlinear model is also available. So and most of the engineering people they are converting the nonlinear model into a linear model based on using this matrix theory. And next, this is a particular in the image processing. Image processing the matrix theory role is very large. They can use like this. So the manipulating images are always equal to the mathematical operations of matrix nature. I think many researchers have belongs to this uh, image processing nature. They know very well how the matrix theory implemented in the image processing. Now here I just show some comparison between the usual algebraic equation 
and in our ODE ordinary differential equations with the linear cases and nonlinear cases. Please look at this, these three nature. So here, this is usual algebraic, linear algebraic equation, AX equal to B form. And these equations taken from the calculus, like the particular differential calculus, this is looking like an, this equation alone, and this is the nature is called a nonlinear. Here, the nonlinearity means this A involved with this X. So in this equation, we know the outcomes, the existence, I think, any system of equations written in the form of AX equal to B, our main outcomes are called how existence and the number of solutions. So how to find a solution for such kind of natures. And this is the linear OD nature. So from this equation, I think this A is the matrix. So actually, this is the calculus, but the coefficient of this A is common in the matrix form. From this set of equations, our outcome is nothing but finding a solution. So this is in calculus, so we are able to calculate the stability. We know very well, while this A is in matrix form, from that matrix, we can calculate the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues are negative, we know very well, the system is a stable. So because this is a dynamic system nature, and this is the nonlinear nature, the outcomes come under the linearization form, and it stabilizes the stability of the equilibrium structure. So these are the applications from the algebra, and these are the applications taken from a linear ODE and nonlinear. So, these things are... So, now go to my main presentation cases. Yeah, next, entering to eigenvalues and eigenvector natures. So, uh, mathematical people, we know very well how to solve an eigenvector and uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So, we, I need to show you on a small thing. Uh, and so, why we go for... Uh, this eigenvalue and eigenvector nature in a sense. Similarly, suppose we know very well, suppose it is take any vector, either one and two, is it easy to plot? It is easy to plot in the axis one, you're taking one here and you're taking two here, and this is the nature for your representation of vector five. So why the concepts of eigenvalue and eigenvector came in a sense? Now we talk about so far, we talk about the system A is equal to B. So this is a non-homogeneous nature. So suppose we can consider, we can consider, so this is the linear homogeneous system, AX equal to zero in a sense. A is in any matrix, X is an unknown vector. So this system, this system cannot make a plot in this. Can you able to plot this A into X vector geometrically? Is it possible? No, not at all possible. So what they can do, so, this is an vector. This is a two by two matrix. Actually, for example, you can take this is two by two and this is a vector two by one. Then the resultant become two by one. So the resultant matrix is like this. Suppose x one and x two. So from that you can take some common element outside. Then here you can get this same vector. I think this same vector. So instead of making actually this is called the transformation. Instead of making the plotting of ax vector in terms of lambda x vector, like this. So this kind of lambda is called an eigenvalue, and this is called an eigenvector. So in my point of view, so we are unable to make a plot of this system in the two-dimensional plot. So instead of making this, we can make a product. So which matrix product, either A and x vector, may produce some scalar lambda types of the same vector x is over repeated over here. Then we call it as an eigenvalue. And this is called an eigenvector. Eigenvector is always called a non zero. Yes. So, this is the easy point of the eigenvalue and eigenvector natures. And these are all usual theory existing in mathematics point of view. So, we know very well this is the only case I can I just mention over here. Here, A is an n by n matrix, and uh, your AX vector is in a algebraic vector in a R4 n. And these are things are very, we know very well. And uh, the X vectors are non zero vectors. And these eigenvectors are usually studied in vibration, particularly for civil and structural engineering people for uh, calculating your vibrations, genetics, population dynamics, and quantum mechanics, as well as in the geometry. I just, these are all the theory, how to calculate the eigenvalue. So this is the case I just mentioned over it. So this is geometric representation of an eigenvalue nature. So can you be able to plot this AX vector in this niche? Is it possible? No. So instead of AX vector, we are able to plot lambda types of the same vector. Is it possible over here? So that's why 
we are said this is an eigenvalue problem. And uh, here with just show some uh, examples. And this is some of the examples taken from uh, LG, I think, uh, system of uh, linear. I think this is taken from the calculus for system of differential equations in a part. And this is the first differential equation, and this is second differential equation. This is called system of linear equations. So now uh, this is converted into the matrix form AX equal to B. I think this system may shown uh, like uh, X1 dash. So here, here I just take this is X1 dot equal to X2. This is X2 dot equal to X1 plus X2. And the right hand side is converted as that there is no X1 involved in the first case. You can put 0 and 1. And left side, this is 1, 1. And the unknowns are X1 and X2. Then the left side is considered as some vector unit. So this is taken as so this is taken as your x dot vector. So this is this form is called your A matrix A. Then you can calculate it our matrix H. So this is the uh, system of this is the system of linear equation. Sorry, system of uh, differential equations. Here I'll show you one of the outcomes. So these are application nature for the system of uh, linear ODE. We can calculate the stability problem and equality problem based on that. I'll show some particular example for the system of two linear ODE and along with the initial conditions. Then we calculate the eigenvalues of and lambda two. Here both eigenvalues are negative. We know very well if the eigenvalues are negative, it produces the system state. And these are of the high null eigenvector analysis. We know very well. So these are all obvious. So all mathematical people are known very well. And this is the main applications of eigenvalues and eigenvectors involved in. So many engineering fields, particularly in structural engineering, those effects are very much used to have uh, uh, eigenvalue concepts and the mechanical engineering. In uh, mechanical engineering, in the structural cases, they are using for uh, making a building and a bridge construction process. Mechanical natures, they can reduce the only case into linear forms. And in electrical nature, they can calculate the transmission lines and in the chemical cases. In the chemical engineering, it's obvious. System of linear equations with the constant equation that can produce the So once any complicated situation may convert it into a system of equation, then the system may convert it into a matrix theory. Then you can apply that using the matrix theory, they can produce the end of it. So at this point of view, uh, at this stage, I just uh, uh, put the matrix theory concepts. Now I move on to calculus part. Why I'm choosing these two particular lessons, calculus and algebra, both are interconnectedly very helpful for everyone. So, differential calculus in the presentation of differential calculus, I just give some more your topics. So, calculus history, even everywhere we know history of calculus and the types of derivatives, ODE and classification, classification of the solution methods and future study. So, we know very well the usage of calculus is in uh, numerous. So I just mentioned only a few calculus may use it for non predictive weather, finance and uh, building bridges, digital population dynamics, especially in control theory, very helpful, and differential for area and volume and etc. So I need everybody knows anyhow. I just uh, make a recall of our history of calculus. So why I'm putting this uh, history of a calculus in a sense? Uh, we know very well either uh, the father of calculus is Newton. Everybody we know Newton is the father of calculus, but uh, just to think it off, Newton is lived in one place and uh, Leibniz is lived in another place. I think uh, Newton from, uh, I think UK is from, uh, uh, I think France or somewhere else. So both predict the same findings. Both predict the same findings. Newton's is, uh, he only produces the limit derivative and uh, another forms. I think calculus is known in the earlier stages of infinitesimal calculus, both, both in different places, but they produce the for the same results, that is the case. At one stage, I think 
in one stage both the countries make a quarrel who is who is making the first split is the uh, one cold war happened between the uh, both the countries in uk and the uh, uh, country and uh, this is the stages of uh, newton you know very well and lebnis also lebnis also provides some uh, appropriate symbols for derivatives multiple integrals sorry uh, next derivatives as well as uh, uh, limits and concepts all those things the beautiful nature in a sense both showing i think newton's derived is listed first but lebnis published first this is the variation between and the there is much controversy happened between those two parties credited i think who has to accept the credit first so newton derived the result first and the lebnis published first today everyone may call newton began with this derivatives and lebnis began with this integrals but both the combinations of newton and lebnis is called in science fluxions so this is a, a glimpse of uh, history i need to share with you and now differentiation and the derivative actually calculus is the made part of two cases one is uh, differential calculus and integral calculus so due to the span of time i just initiate with the uh, differential nature only so uh, we know that even the calculus is study of uh, derivatives so derivatives are obtained through the process of differentiation you know very well so these are all study of change changes changes in the nature so these are the tools main tools in the calculus derivative i think differential calculus and integral nature so in this talk i just mentioned uh, fully show some derivative cases and these are the interpretation this is i think uh, engineering people are always not interested with this uh, interpretations and the definitions so on so they are always interested in application problems point of view they know how to model and how to solve that so but our theoretical i think science people are always interested within theoretical nature first so these are also limbs of geometric interpretation of the derivative they are using with the moving approach uh, to point these things are very no very well all the faculty members because all the participants are faculty members you know very well at all and i no need to take much time in this slide and the next i move on uh, types of derivatives you know very well uh derivatives are usually classified as two types one is ordinary derivative and one is a partial derivative these ordinary derivatives come under the you know, functions involved a single variable i think only one in particularly mathematics point of view we know very well have a function involved only one independent variable then we can call it as an ordinary derivative more than one in a sense partial you know the engineering nature how the engineering people are defined this kind of uh, changes i think this kind of uh, derivatives are uh, considered in a sense so the conservation also basis of uh, many engineering models change so change in essence definitely they are going to taken as sum of increases minus sum of decreases if there is no change involved that in essence it is called as a static problem that is steady state there is a change definitely it is called a time is involved is a change involved time is there that is called a dynamic problem so this is the engineering people that can model in this part of course and so many application i think these are all uh, we taught in uh, engineering i think basic b b tech people they as well as me people also say so this calculus is not uh, involved in chemical engineering and civil engineering chemical engineering these are some natures textual i think uh, bridge construction structural engineering nature and especially mechanical engineering i think this is called mass spring system and this is called electrical engineering system so in this talk i mainly concentrated on these two only i just show you some analytical thinking point of view i show some uh, simple illustration the first illustration taken from the calculus not a different calculus is purely taken from the calculus just show you for your understanding purpose a parking suppose everyone uh, in the holiday time we are entering to the malls and also on so so based on that i pick one problem a parking lot charges at 20 for first hour and uh, 10 for an each success daily maximum of rupees uh, 70 so they are asking to sketch the graph here the calculus is involved because each and every hour the charges are changed so in this problem how to graph how to sketch how to sketch this situation into uh, nature काय 
हे मग असं झालं तुला जसं सांगतं ना तसं सांग आता तू ज्या ह्याच्याप्रमाणे जातेस ना हॅलो मग इथे एनी डिस्टर्बन्सेस कॅन प्रोसिड so this is one kind of uh, problem for an uh, calculus that means uh, this problem related with some some changes happen uh, periodically you know, how to plot that changes in calculus point of view and this is the output for the previous situation please read this problem here the rupees 20 is charged for first hour and each succeeding hour in the next hour uh 10 rupees are uh, uh, i think the first hour and 10 rupees are changes for each succeeding hour the maximum 70 and just show you here so first from margin to one hour i think your x axis is taken in as a time hour and this is the cost and this is the plot for such kind of situation i think each hour from 0 to 1 20 rupees 1 to 2 10 rupees are changes they are in the problem they said rupees 10 is changes for each succeeding hour so that kind of situation may plot over you this i think this graph sense shows the point of discontinuities at each of us it shows so this is the problem just some basic problem will shows these things in our be be the people and now can we now m1 differential equations so we know very well differential equations are of two types the standard types are called ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations based on the derivatives only and uh, uh, much concentration why we go for differential equation that is the purpose so usual questions may arise what do you mean by differential equation what does it signify where and how the differential equation originate that is the purpose so in the next slide i just show you how the differential equation arises this is in my point of view i just show that one and what are the and what use of the differential equation and then and next origin of the differential equation i think this is my point of view i just show this uh, we know very well this one we said he is the father of calculus and also for uh, newton has produced three laws of uh, motions we know very well so these are the laws first law second and third law yes you please look at the second law of motion this is rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the force acting on it Uh, and it takes place the direction of the force actually the second law uh, is converted into mathematical equation like force equal to mass into acceleration we know very well i think see in the newton second law we are able to write in the newton second law we are able to write force uh, Force equal to mass into acceleration. We know very well. This force is come under a vector nature, and mass is the scalar nature, acceleration. So we know very well the rate of change of velocity is called an acceleration. We know that. So displacement velocity is nothing but rate of change of displacement. We know very well. Acceleration is nothing but rate of change of velocity. I think dv by dt, and this one may be replaced by so. these things and i am going to substitute over here so this vector actually this f vector is considered as a function f and this is a scalar and this is an acceleration and the acceleration is replaced by this one d square x by dt square and this one can be rewritten in the form of d square x by dt square and this is called 1 by m times of force yes so here because so this is a law This is a conservation. This is the engine people are always interested. This is a conservation of law. This conservation law is converted into a mathematical equation like this, a differential equation. So d square x by dt square is equal to one by mass times of f. So what is the nature of f? This f may taken as function of time alone. We are taken as this is the time. Here is this function of time alone. The f of t in a sense, this function is a linear part. Suppose we can take f of t. I think the function involved time and displacement. otherwise we can take time displacement and velocity because this is second order nature so in the right hand side of the function we may consider either a function of t alone time alone 
our time under uh, displacement, our uh, time displacement and velocity. So now we will look up. Now you can co combine all these things. So you are looking like so d square x by dt square that is equal to some constant times of adding uh, function f of t x and x. Now you look at this. This is the difference equation. So based on this, I from my point of view, I can conclude from the Newton second law of motion. So this is the equation we can consider from the Newton second law mathematically expressed in the form of f equal to mass and acceleration. We know very well. Then the next nature. So this is the form I need to tell you. So the right hand side force by m is nothing but this taken as a force, and this force is in vector quantity, and that f is considered as f of t or x r, x r depends upon the situation. So this is taken from I think the equation d square x by dt square is arises from the Newton second law of motion. In my point of view, I conclude that a differential equation arises from the nature. So this is the name, this is the point I just suggested from the start. And uh, here the unknown variable is called an x. So this x is called a classical solution in a sense. This is continuous and uh, continuously differentiating and so on. So it depends upon the situation we can make it produce. So next we know one of the classification existing in on the different uh, I consider only OD, not one PD. So majority classifications of ODs are orders, you know, very well, then linearity. So this is the most important natures in engineering field. So till now, the nonlinear differential, only few nonlinear differential equations only are solvable. And many things are not, not at all solvable. So the task is how to reduce the nonlinearity and linearity. This is a big task today's problems, today's engineering field. And the accelerated conditions we know very well, initial and boundary values. So linear and nonlinear. So in the algebraic system, we said linear based on the covers of uh, your uh, uh, variables as well as the product norm. So uh, I think the product between the variables are not followed. Similar nature, we in the differential equation, we produce the linearity in H and H. Either a dependent variable, otherwise the derivative quotient have a degree one uh, and uh, the product between dependent and the differential coefficient, not product between each other. Otherwise, the differential equation is not linear. So these are the particular examples. I just uh, go for a uh, solution of the differential equations. So these are the major classifications of solution existing in the uh, order differential equations. Analytical solutions, analytical solutions based on your approach. Either so many methods are there for finding an analytical solution. Either it is a first order, second order, or nth order. You, can, you may follow many techniques. That is called uh, analytical solutions. And only some special cases of nonlinear differential equations are available. Not all nonlinear differential equations. Analytical solutions are not at all possible to get all nonlinear. Some few only. Then, in case of uh, analytical solutions are lacking, in the case we move for a numerical solution. We know very many techniques existing for uh, numerical technique like uh, uh, RK method and Gekuta. So many so on so as there. We know very well. And the graphical solution. Graphical solution is called direction fields, in a, especially in the differential equations. We call it as an isoclines. This produces for an graphical solutions for the differential equations. Next, applications of differential equations. So, as an engineer, we call in a, actually any lecture uh, we are took for an engineering mathematics. We use an equation like this. This is an equation we are always calling it as the uh, engineering. Engineering plus mathematics plus mathematics given that similarly engineering engineering neglection of mathematics. So I always insisted for students with engineering mathematics always produces for everything. Everything. If there is no mass involved for an engineering, the people are called nothing. So this is the equation format I always mention in our students. Especially, particularly in this mathematics concept, uh, engineering people very much strong with this calculus, calculus as well as engineers. So these two portions are very much important and interesting for engineering people. So applications over everywhere, especially mechanical field, electrical field, uh, all we people always uh, working with an electrical circuits. Those circuits are modeled by we know various second order differential equations. 
given uh, any uh, three circuits are means second order in the two circuit in a sense the circuit involved in the two components means first order we know very well and in the mass spring system i think the shack observer we know very well either in my two wheeler or four wheeler the shack observer model by mass spring systems so many many things are available i will mention only few we know very well model in nature many physical transmission i think the transmission from physical situation to a mathematical situation is called a modeling and this is the process for mathematical model we done physical system may convert it into a mathematical model then we can make it in a mathematical solution mathematical solution and now physical interpretation finally we draw with the physical interpretation so uh, for this case i just show some uh, analytical thinking uh, this is the chemical reaction problem i think this is a usual problem we took in our uh, vbt people uh, the situation is there is a mixture of tanks there so uh, in the before doing the i think this is uh, some inlet of water this is an outlet of water from the inlet there are two nature either the inlet water may be a pure water or a impurity uh, before doing the process in the tank itself we have some brine brine in a sense there is a water already mixed with some brine i think some impurities are there so after the mixture of tank it's actually in inlet the water is coming in inlet of the tank then after mixing some of the water going out after some time we have to calculate how much the amount of salt present in this tank this is the problem so there, here there is some dynamics are happen so this kind of model this is on chemical chemical reaction model so so based on this model setup i just introduce some uh, illustration this is on illustrations are there a tank initially contains some amount of uh, water is there initially this is the initial condition this is the initial condition amount of salt is dissolved in that so after running inside so some rate of flow this is a rate of flow of water is given in the flow of water each of the uh, unit water involves some uh, pi mv of salt is there the same amount of water is going out the question is how to find the salt of amount at any time otherwise some particular time is there so this is the modeling equation so this is the model actually the same job this is the general model this model i think this situation is converted into mathematical equation so this is the job of engineers so after this nature we are going to solve so the c for concentration of inflow then this is called rate of inflow and this is called rate of outflow this is called concentration of outflow so the so the entire setup is called a differential equation then we can this is looking like a first order ode we know very well how to solve the first order ode so after filling this uh, values taken from this illustration so everything is given in right hand side form either in uh, x y form or uh, constant form then you can solve and find the amount of salt is called y of t the next example just uh, proceed with the mosfet system the this is the model i think this is the basic fundamental model that you use mosfet system uh, in particular in the relative situation we call it as called an shake observer so why this mosfet system is most important so without this system our uh, driving car or bike or uh, everything is very tedious so these the uh, role of this spot is most important and how this model how, how this spot may model in mathematical equations we know very well so in this model uh, hooke's law plays uh, a big role and this is the nature everywhere uh, newton's law may plays a big role so this is taken from the newton's law motion second law so force equal to mass acceleration we know very well acceleration is the base of the of the so from our mass spring system this is the nature is taken as a so this x dash is called a damping coefficient so i think this is a damping term the c is called a damping coefficient and uh, the second order nature is involved in this case so based on this acceleration i think from this uh, newton's law of motion this is happening so finally i can show you this is the model for mass spring system x is called a displacement and c is called the damping coefficient this is called a damping term k is the spring constant i think here the spring entered with the mass and this is called a spring constant and uh, the right hand side is called some effective force maybe it may be zero in a sense there is no external force acting on it in case of zero we have a force involved so this is the math model for mass spring system so once that uh, this is a mechanical system this is a mechanical people are used this is a mechanical situation this situation may convert it into a mathematical expression in the form of second order differential equation till it is clear so these problems come under come 
linear linear set. We know very well how to solve this second order differential equation. So these are the linear set. So in this point of view, I need to recall that one. So this kind of second order differential equations. Suppose in the first case, I, I inform. So suppose this is the second order. This is the second order differential equation. So we have to convert the second order into algebraic equation. So instead of this derivative, we may place this form. So this is called calculus. This is called algebra. This transformation is called operational calculus. So this is a condition because we know the technique for solving this one. Like suppose in a first derivative, we have in the case we solved dy by y equal to dx like this. So this kind of situation is now apply over here. So in this case, we have to borrow some of the ideas from the analysis. So after finding the roots for it, then you can produce a solution for calculus. So so that's why I said this calculus part as well as an algebra part. Both are very much important in the engineering phase. So in the next, I just show you some electrical circuit problems. So here, you uh, this electrical circuit is a combination of uh, three components: inductance, capacitance, and resistance. Along with the EMF. Uh, for this uh, kind of uh, situations, the sum of the law is called the Kirchhoff's law is acting on it. So based on the Kirchhoff's law, we can model it. I think. Um, this is the model that can show. So from that Kirchhoff's law in a sense, the voltage drops, I think, uh, the electromotive force is equal to the sum of the voltage drops across the circuit. So, so based on the Kirchhoff's law, this equation is framed, and uh, these uh, Qs are replaced by I. We know very well the current is nothing but the absence of charge. So after making this conversion, this is the final form. Next, we show the math model. So this is the math model of uh, electromotive force. So not a electromotive, I think this is an electrical, electrical nature. So this is also in second order form, as like in the mechanical system we showed. The situation is different, but the equation is. So now this is a comparison between the mechanical system and electrical system. The modeling equations, the Mentioning the situations are mechanical and electrical, but the concept of the equations are same. Here we call that unknown variable is called a displacement. Here we call it as a current. Here we call it as a cause and an inductance and damping constant. Here C is called a damping cause, here a hot resistance. K is a spring constant and it is called a capacity. And the advantages of mathematical model. So why the mathematical models are more advantages in sense? And so so far I mentioned two systems, mechanical and uh, current. But in many cases, the essential simplification of electrical circuits are assembled. Actually, the mechanical systems, the model by mechanical systems are more complicated. Actually, it is a high cost. So compared to that, electrical systems are adjustable. I think the measurements of displacements be more time consuming less secure than the purpose of mathematical modeling is this. So how much you have to consume more, more time and Less cost. That is the nature. Of what is the advantage of mathematical model? And now I move on the end of the situation. What are all the current study, current and future study in the calculus point of view? And this is called fractional calculus. So our current research is moving on the fractional calculus. Really. I think uh, any you know, participants from mathematics uh, people they know very well what it would be fractional calculus. In this fractional calculus, also there is only studies there. So how the fraction calculus I mean, every I think many of them thought this is uh, uh, from uh, now now uh, I think uh, the current research actually this fraction calculus discussion made in 1695 uh, from uh, Lebanese to Elapita. Um, uh, how they actually this year is called it as a uh, birthday of a uh, fraction calculus. Actually, the story is initially Elapita. Allow people ask a question to Leibniz. What because because Leibniz making the formulation of definitions of uh, derivatives. So allow people ask a question. What do you ask? Uh, allow people ask the question to Leibniz. Initially, what do you ask? What happened? 
what is the interpretation? Actually, it is the nth order. For example, d over n over by dx over n. So, you know, will ask the question, this is n is an integer order. This is called an integer order. What happens? This integer order becomes a non-integer Non-integer order. So, this is the question asked L of Peter to Leibniz. So, Leibniz replied that, he asked the question, what happens if particularly this n replaced by 1 bit? This is the reply, reply from Leibniz to L of Peter. So, Leibniz finally, he, he told, so, as is shown, this is a conversation between him, who Leibniz and L of Peter, this is a conversation has done. So he said, this is a paradox. Paradox in a sense, unpredictable nature. He replied for a paradox, but most of the consequences can drawn from the uh, non-integer. That's why we call it as a fraction. Just to think it of in this uh, previous problem here, just to think this is a di by d, I think d squared, no? instead of d squared, suppose here you can happen, what about one by two, d power one by two, just to think it of. See, what happened? This is d power of, y by dx power of, can you able to do? So this is the current study is going on it. So the conversation letter between Leibniz to L orbital happened in the year, I think nearly, I think uh, is 30th September, uh, particularly remember 30th September 1695, and that day itself uh, celebrated by birthday of the fraction calculus. Later on, so many kind of uh, types of uh, fractional derivatives uh, formed by Grunwald, Letnikov, Riemann, Leovili, Caputo, so many theories are developed later. And uh, in my point of view, I just uh, shown some of the interpretation of what you buy by usual derivative and uh, fraction derivative. This is, just look at the surface. This surface is uniform nature. So this is the interpretation form interpretation for the usual limit, like dy by dx, and this is the interpretation for non-uniform nature. So, till now, fraction calculus interpretations are not derived here. That's all. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Questionary session participants can give you queries and feedback to the station. Participant, you can feel free to ask any questions. Participants, you can ask your questions. I think I suggest uh, participants are doing any research in a sense. Nowadays, this fraction calculus play a big role. So if you anybody, anyone can do uh, your research under, uh, you are interested in doing some dynamic systems like differential equations or uh, whatever may be. You may feel feel free to contact me, and we'll make a uh, contributor to work each other. So, any questions? Any queries from any questions from participants? Right now. When are we lined up? Participant, do you have any questions? You can feel free to ask. I request you to all, all the participants to fill the feedback form which is available in the chat box. 
and all the participants are requested to turn on your camera for a while to take photo thank you kindly turn on your camera please I call upon Mrs. B. Boone Ram Kumari, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, to present over time. Gratitude is the fairest blossom which springs from the soul. It's my privilege and honor. To, uh, to, gratitude to our special guest, Dr. Radha Krishnan, for gracing us with their presence, sharing invaluable thoughts on the topic differential calculus and matrix theory in science, engineering, and technology. Your words have truly inspired and enlightened us all. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you, sir. A special thanks to our principal, vice principal, and directors in absentia. And I would like to thank our HODs and faculty members for this grateful ses session. I would also like to extend my thanks to our organizing committee who have worked to make this session a grand su success. Thank you, participants, for your cooperation and on today's session. Thank you all. Madam <clears throat> Participant can fill your feedback form, which is available in the chat box. Madam, may I leave? Hello? Ma, Radakshan speaking, ma. May I leave? Yes, sir.